Peace, y'all. What's cracking? Before we start this episode of Real Notes, I wanted to let you know that my first book ever, Real Notes, Culture Writing on the Margins of Music and Movies, is out on March 8th, 2024. About two-ish years ago, my good homie Austin Williams approached me about writing a primer on the worlds of digital journalism, criticism, and how they intersect for his journalism students over at City College. And naturally, I jumped at the opportunity. This book is part autobiography, part journalism textbook, and part essay collection spotlighting some of my earlier work, particularly from my old stomping grounds over at djbooth.net shout out to z for the permission for letting me use all my old work <laughs> this industry has always been unstable but with layoffs and general consolidation happening at publications all over this book feels even more pertinent now than it did while i was writing it and while it may be for students anyone who's a fan of writing music film and this podcast in particular will probably appreciate it this book is only available digitally through the kindle app for now i promise we got physical stuff coming but we're doing something special for that so y'all just got to stay locked in but for now uh go to amazon search for real notes culture writing on the margins of music and movies and pre-order today no you don't need to have a kindle in order to read the book just download the kindle app and your pre-order will be sent to you on release day good looks to all of y'all for your support and your consideration it really really means the world now let's get to talking <laughs> What's good, y'all? My name is Dylan Green, and this is Real Notes, a space dedicated to blurring the cultural and artistic lines between rap and film. I'm here to chop it up with everyone from rappers and producers to journalists and video directors about their relationship to movies and how, if at all, film inspires their craft. My guest this week is California rapper producer Baby Africa. We spoke about Saltburn, Joker, A Clockwork Orange, how she transitioned from producing to rapping, the difference between being funny and being real, how her battle with Stevens Johnson syndrome changed the way she makes music, and the creative process behind her last two albums, 2022's The Art of Geekin' and this year's The Rapture. Come fuck with us. What's cracking, everybody? Um, welcome back uh yeah no nah, welcome back to real notes shit i'm so confused because this is i didn't say this off camera but this is literally the first episode of this i've recorded in like a month and a half oh really um, I don't, yeah i don't know if it's gonna be the first one that's out out but like this <laughs> is the first one that i'm doing for the whole new season new year oh. new bullshit all that so um so yeah nah my name is dylan green cinema Sci. um got a lot of names do a lot of shit outside inside all sides um it feels good to say all this shit again but um <laughs> i'm with <laughs> i'm with somebody um i'm with somebody else today who uh who has a crazy way with words and has been just has just been just been shitting on niggas for the last like you know like three four years in all sorts yeah, of different casual. ways <laughs> casual real casual <laughs> But um, you know, like I'm, I'm, you know, California's finest. She's um, she's put out two great projects over the course of the last like year and a half. We got um, Baby Africa, Jasmine's hey. here. Um, Thanks man. for having me. Yo, thank you for being here. It really, it yeah, you know, it really means a lot. We um, I think the last time we spoke was like maybe about it was when whenever Big Africa dropped. That was like what, like two two ish years ago. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, yeah. So, like, obviously, like, a lot's happened in the last two years. Right. Um, but before we get into any of that, I just appreciate you being here to talk about, you know, movies and, you know, music and all sorts of all sorts of fun <laughs> shit. We have we have fun over here when we can. Right. But, um, but yeah. So I guess just to just to kick this off real quick. Um, what's the last movie or TV show you watched that you had a strong opinion about? Mm, well, the last one that I watched. I was watching um, Saltburn. Okay. <laughs> Tell me how you felt about Saltburn. <laughs> Honestly, I liked it, but I think I probably have to watch it again because my attention span was just like, I was like, I kind of like have to be doing multiple things at one time. So I was watching yeah. it and then I would just pause it and kind of look at my phone and kind of like go do something else. But I like psychological thrillers, so I like shit that makes you think and like you have to be, like I like shit when you have to like go and watch it another time just to make sure yeah. you collected everything from it. So it was a good from from what I see. I mean, I seen like I seen the whole thing, but I just feel like there's probably parts that I probably missed or didn't really pick up on. 
Mm-hmm. But it was it was very crazy. It was like one of those where you gotta sit and be like, wait, and then be like, whoa, like what? <laughs> yeah, no, nah, it, it was okay. So I watched it. I want to say I watched it like right around the time it came out, mm-hmm. and so it looked gorgeous, really well acted, really well directed. Um, yeah, I I'm agree. like. Like I'm normally huge on psychological thrillers too, mm-hmm. and I love I love you know like I love stuff where you gotta like double back and like you know like where there's like a twist that like recontextualizes the whole thing and shit. Exactly. But I watched this and I I kind of hated it. <laughs> I was like <laughs> I, I I was I was I was so upset about it because like because like I went in like it was one of those like a thousand people were talking about it and I was yeah. like all right let me let, let, let me go check this out and I made it through and I was just like. I like I really just I don't know why it, it just didn't click for me like I was talking to my girl really? about this because she watched it like a week after I did mm-hmm. she loved it I hated it but it's just like so much of it I, I really don't want to sound like a fucking hater here but like so much of it was like it felt like it was trying so hard to like shock people and and, and just like mm-hmm. be like and, and like be like the craziest thing you've ever seen and it's mm-hmm. just like it it felt like it was trying too hard for me. Yeah, personally. I can see that. Like I didn't it, like, I didn't hate it, but I didn't like love it. It was just like it was it was good from mm-hmm. what I've seen. It could have been better. There's like one of my like more so favorites, like um, like in that kind of genre, I guess is like old though. It's a Clockwork Orange. Uh huh. Yeah, classic. Yeah, I feel like it kind of like has like kind of similarities but that one was like more jarring yeah it, it, it's 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 just like between the um you know just like between between him drinking out the drinking out the shower drain and then <laughs> and, 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 and 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 then the whole scene in the garden where he's where, where he where, where um where he's going down on shorty on her period yeah. i'm just like 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 i get it i understand the aesthetic like i get what they're trying to go for but it's just mm-hmm. like it just how do I want to put this? You remember, you remember like Tumblr in like the early 2010s mm-hmm. when you when when there was like certain shows and like movies where you'd be like, oh, that's gonna be like a four gif like yeah, spread exactly. on Tumblr. Mm-hmm. Like Saltburn felt like that to me, and it felt Literally. like it was like it, it, and and like but like uh, I, like I, it was I don't not know, the like, time it, for it. Like it's past. Like the time has passed for that. N- not even that. It was just like it really just felt like it was trying. It just felt like it was trying really, really hard to shock you and make you be like, look at how crazy this is, you know, yes. like, and it's, and like, I just kind of, I love stuff like that, but not when it tries too hard to be like, look at this, that's really wild, right? Like, and it, yeah, it, it, I, exactly. I don't know, like, but like you, <laughs> I want to try it again. Um, I'm I'm gonna try it again at some point yeah. because like it's a it's a beautiful movie to look at, like ev- yeah, everything exactly. else about it works, but like. Mm-hmm just like the whole ethos and the attitude of it just didn't, it just didn't do it for me, man. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I'm going to try again though, because yeah, I, it, it's, and then we got to like catch back up on it. We can definitely do that. <laughs> um, but before we move on, when was the, when was the first time you saw Clockwork Orange? Cause I haven't seen Clockwork mm-hmm. Orange in like at least a decade. It's been a minute. Damn. Yeah. The first time I seen it, it was probably a hell of long ago. Like, maybe four or five years ago mm-hmm. yeah it was definitely a while ago i don't even remember how oh i think like i just seen like somebody probably on instagram i don't know if it was a friend or somebody random and i just they probably like took a picture of like a clip of it and i was like oh that looks cool like and i like like old looking cool movies so i was like yeah. oh i gotta watch it and i like asked him what it was and then like I just instantly was like oh my god this looks so cool like i have to watch it just like it was like just pleasing to the eye at first and then like with the story it just like it was great yeah it, it, yeah that movie that movie's a fucking Timeless. roller coaster son it, yeah. it's it's just like like you know, like there's a lot there's a lot of really uncomfortable scenes in it you know yeah for like, sure there's there's, a, there's like a scene near the beginning that i won't describe but i'm sure you know exactly what i'm yeah. talking about mm-hmm. like that with um on with um they're singing singing in the rain i'm gonna yeah. just call it the singing in the rain yeah scene. yeah, it was, it's, yeah it's... they literally put me onto that song cause i literally love that song sad that's the song that, like it has to be like from seeing from that scene specifically but that song eats <laughs> yeah that song goes crazy yeah i love yeah. that song um 
I think if I had to pick a favorite scene in the movie that I remember, it's like near the end once he uh once he gets like the programming done mm-hmm. and he like and he's like turned off from all the violent shit that he mm-hmm. was doing. And then like he's in his room and I think like they start playing um the classical oh, song. Oh yeah, and he gets triggered. And, yeah, he gets triggered and he's just like in the room just like trying to get it to turn off and then he just like yeah. runs and jumps out the like like the like the bit where he jumps out the window and like the camera falls to so the like that shit is yeah, so that was Ill that was me. hard. Like <laughs> yeah, I really like the scene when they were having like their little orgy or whatever. Just like how they were how they were sped up everything. Mm-hmm. That was fire. And then like just how the bed had the little pointy like things on the sheets. Like the whole yeah. house was like insane. And it was like a band though. Yeah, for it was real. Like the <laughs> most fire band I've ever fucking seen in my life. Yeah, no, that shit was really in the cut, like just like just like surrounded by trees and shit. Yeah, like a abandoned fucking apartment. <laughs> that and um and um and then the scene where he like beats up on all the droogs and he throws them all in the water. I don't yeah, know. Like, my God, there's I just, love like, that part. There's just like like there's just they really like, tried to play him like he wasn't the mastermind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, they tried and failed, honestly. Yeah, but like but like that but like uh, but a- that's another one I want to watch again because, like, A, I haven't seen it in a minute, but it's just, mm-hmm. like, all I ever remember is just, like, I remember the story. Like, I remember, mm-hmm. like, the broad strokes, but, like, there's always, there, it's, like, moments that kind of, that that make up that movie for me. It's, like, mm-hmm. that's how long it's been since I've seen it. Like, I, 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 yeah, I, I you definitely like, like, watch it again. Yeah, because, like. I've watched like, it so many times. In, in the four or five years since you've seen it? Yeah. Crazy. It's, like, one of my um, faves man yeah i i have i have a lot of feelings about stanley kubrick i like some of his movies there's some others that i don't but a clockwork mm-hmm. orange is one that you know like when i watched it i was like yeah this is like i get i get why people i get why people like i mean I, I, okay saying that makes me sound like i don't like it i like the movie <laughs> but um, <laughs> but yeah no it's a good one it's mm-hmm. definitely a good one how do you feel about the movie overall like what the message do you feel like people can change or do you feel like he actually did change even though like he ended up jumping out the window i don't really remember like after he jumped out the window and he was like healing was he back on his bullshit because i think there was like a scene yeah like remember how the end of the scene like after he jumps out the window and then he's in um what how he's narrating it is like he's going to getting back to himself and like he's dreaming of all these beautiful things but the beautiful things are just all the crazy like bad shit that he was getting away from and now he's like able to have like that joy from it again right so i so i mean like it was a really interesting way to explore all of that i think um i honestly don't know like where he stood like at mm-hmm. the end because like you could, you could kind of tell that he was like he was like trying to fight it a little bit but like not too yeah. much i mean i, I feel do... like he's trying but he had no choice because he was getting fucking sick yeah you know yeah like it was uh yeah yeah because then that because then like you said that just brings up the whole like you know like can you change a person's nature like do people Mm -hmm. you know like can people change i think people can change obviously but like i just like no no, there are some people who are just so sick and twisted that they're just past the point of no return and the movie kind of like it's weird because the movie kind of like fucks with that a little bit but also like doesn't it it, it, like really plays in the middle of like yeah exactly the good and bad yeah, and, you know, kind of like glorifying it, but also like demonizing it a little. It, it's like I like I said, I'd be interested to rewatch it and see if I still feel that way. But when I first mm-hmm. saw it, I was like, you know, it was a. Uh, I might have seen it in like, maybe it was college. It was either high school or college. I can't remember, mm-hmm. but you know, like I I was I was fucking with it. I think uh I think Kubrick is one of the most like at his best. He's one of the most talented directors ever. Like yeah. his shit just his shit's just like super expansive and he but he's also UK? he's from the uk yeah mm-hmm. he's all he's also a lot because like he was one of those who would like push their actors to the limits and yeah like he was mm-hmm. y- 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 you know like bordering on like the abusive and shit yeah. <laughs> like there's there's some actors on um i think like the shining and a couple other movies yeah oh my that God, were, i've like, seen that shine the, the shining great yeah the shine <laughs> that's the another great. one too yeah i've seen <laughs> something on tiktok um about shelly duvall and like how she was like really fucked up from that movie just like yeah. how it made her do shit like so many times and like yeah she was going through it i think she's still like not okay from it yeah I, yeah i always feel really terrible about that like the movie's great but it's just like you gotta At like cost? right exactly because like you think about like because like i love Terrence or 
I like Quentin Tarantino, but mm-hmm. he also did a lot of shit to Uma Thurman during Kill Bill that was also yeah. kind of on like some Shelley Duvall shit. It's just, it, it just gives you more to think about while you watch it. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's complicated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put it that way. It's complicated. But um, but let's take it all the way back with you in movies. Um, what's the first movie experience you can remember having? It could be at the theater. It could be at your cousin house. Like first moment. The, um, I'm the first one that comes to mind for you. Maybe like the Lion King. <laughs> <laughs> Always a good choice. It's yeah. one of mine too. I feel you. Probably the Lion King. Probably because I was like in like a little play of it when I was like a kid. And then like another childhood one. It wasn't like hella young, but I remember I had got food poison food poisoning and then the ambulance had came and they had gave me um a DVD and so that it was um Home Alone. So then uh-huh. that became like my favorite movie ever and I just like binge watched it so many times. <laughs> that was like yeah, probably one of my favorites um growing up. And then um the Santa Claus movie, I, f- I don't know which one it is. I feel like there's a couple of them. The and one with like, Tim Allen? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that one. <laughs> um, I gotta ask, what role what 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 role did you play when you were in The Lion King? That's a great question. I have no idea. I don't even remember. All I know is I was in the play. I have to ask my mom that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's so funny. You remember you do, do you at least remember if it was like a main character or just like a supporting type shit or like a background? character like that's so funny <laughs> yeah it's just like a piece of that memory stuck with me i don't really remember stuff from when i was a kid like lengthy things i remember like the small specific things mm-hmm. yeah i feel you i was um um i actually auditioned to be in a traveling production of the lion king when i was really? younger uh um I, th- I think i auditioned to play young simba i must have been like uh-huh. 10 11 12 years old or some shit yeah and uh, I think I, I think I made it to like the second round of callbacks, but mm-hmm. then I didn't make it. But you know, uh-huh. it is what it is. I, yeah, I, I, I can also, so I, see that for you though. <laughs> yeah, I um, I was I was I was better at all that shit when I was a kid than I yeah, am. Yeah, literally. But <laughs> yeah, I agree. But yeah. um, but but I love I love the Lion King. It's a classic. It's 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 the first movie <laughs> I remember seeing as a kid. Like mm-hmm. I saw I saw it when I was like four. My uh, my dad tells me the story all the time. <laughs> like he took me to the theater and I was like standing at the seat. Like I like got up and like stood and just like watched it from like behind a chair oh, for that's like so cute. the whole hour and a half. And that's where that's where my love for movies started. So that's a special oh. one for me too. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> but what about uh what about Home Alone? Like what 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 was it about Home Alone? I I mean like outside of the fact that that was like mm-hmm. the only movie you had, like like what was it about it that made you binge watch it a bunch of times while on food poisoning? <laughs> on food poisoning my fault i meant just having food poisoning (laughs) i don't know probably like something with me being like in extreme discomfort and pain and like that bringing comfort to me but also like even like as an adult like i just love that movie it's just i don't know like i don't even think just because like the christmasy spirit because i'm not even like a holiday kind of person yeah but i don't know just maybe because it brings me back to like my childhood like watching it as an adult, at least I love um, Macaulay Culkin in it. He was so clever and witty in it. <laughs> yeah, and I probably would just think of yeah. it like watch it and just be thinking like, damn, like what would I do if that was me in that case? And I was like, got away from my family, and like, damn, I probably would not have made it like he did though for sure. <laughs> so yeah, he was very smart in there. And yeah, no, he was yeah, no, he was about it. Like he really, he 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 really turned the whole house into like Tom and Jerry or some shit. And that always, <laughs> cause like. Cause like when I was younger, the only I feel like the only part I ever remember is the part where um where the, where the sticky bandits or or uh, mm-hmm. where the wet bandits come in and, they, and yeah. they all get fucked up in the house. But like of course, there's like a whole hour of that beforehand where mm-hmm. it's just like like talking about the family dynamic and Kevin being alone in the crib and then yeah, um, they kind of um, had Mar- Kevin fucked up. I think they were doing him wrong. That's crazy. And then they did it twice. Like I just, I just, I just, I just watched the second one over the holidays in my family, and like, these which one do you really like best? Let, which one do I like best? The first one. Yeah, but the like, but, not but, bad either. It's weird because I remember the second one. Like I, like I remember the second one as like a whole movie more than I remember right? the first one as a whole movie. Because like I love, I love the pigeon lady. I love the toy mm-hmm, store. I love too. the, 
Like, um, um, I always forget that Donald Trump's in it. <laughs> That's yeah, always fun, so fun weird. and weird to see that. But um, you, you know, because isn't he staying at um, he's staying at the um, the Trump Hotel. Yeah, I think I think it's like the plaza. Like I remember yeah. when I was younger, I specifically wanted to go to the plaza hotel oh my because God, I me saw too. it in the movie. <laughs> the shit. third one um, is the one that has a different kid, right? Uh, uh, the th- third one's garbage. I hate yeah. it. Yeah, they should have kept Macaulay Culkin. Yeah, it's 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 not the same. And you know, like they can't they it's can't not. do it. They um uh, you ever see a Christmas story? I think so. So like, so like, I want to say like two, three years ago, they made like a twenty years or thirty year later sequel to it, where like I the hate little when they do that. Like, Me too. Like the little, the, like the little kid's a grown man now, and mm-hmm. he goes home, and it's just like, what are we doing here, y'all? Like, like we don't want to like, see a grown man. We want to see a kid go, like, because at the time we were kids, we don't want to see yeah. how he has grown up. Now we're grown. We don't really care. You know? Yeah, you know, it, it's like it's got to be really special for me to like, you know, like I wouldn't want to see like home alone 30 years later like i don't need to yeah, see like him crazy. in the I, I don't need that you know like no nobody really needs that but yeah. um but yeah no like home alone was it's weird because outside of like the ending i would watch the ending and like you know like love it because it's mm-hmm. it's it's great even though like i mean like he was he was he was kind of batman in on them and that was kind of mm-hmm. crazy but like yeah he was on, for sure but like i was uh I didn't like love the movie until I got older and then I like really? watched it again and like and like took in the whole thing as like a big picture because mm-hmm. like because like it really was like you know how now people will just like take like the craziest part of a movie and just like turn it into like a TikTok or like a YouTube mm-hmm. video and you could just watch that like that's how that was it was like compartmentalized in that way for mm-hmm. me. yeah I see that and, and now like having watched the whole movie where like you get to see like the family dynamic and like how like neglectful his parents are and how like mm-hmm. he gets and, and like how his how his brother and all his siblings bully him and shit and yeah. just like him him like reveling in all of that and like the relationship with the old man and him going to the church like it, it's 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 like weird to say but I never took it in as a whole movie until I got older and like yeah I probably didn't either movie, honestly you know yeah it's it's like like that one in particular is uh like rewatching it again recently, I was like, yeah, you know, like I, I was, I, I, I was, I was, I wasn't like hating on it, but it was never like I would always be like, oh, we're watching Home Alone again. It's Christmas, <laughs> like, but I'm, 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 I'm fucking with it now. So. Yeah. Um. That's funny. But as you get older and you start to have a few more life experiences, like, was there a movie that you saw? Like, what was the first, like, capital M movie you can remember seeing? Like, something that really, like, connected with you on, like, either, like, an emotional, artistic, or just, like, something that really just, like, stopped you when you were, like, this is a movie, you know? Like, n- something that's not just, like, 90 minutes of entertainment type shit. Mm-hmm. Or it could be 90 minutes of entertainment. Like, just something that was, like, special to you. Hmm. Let me think. That's a good question. I really like... I don't know, there's like a lot of movies that, okay, well, this one's like more kind of recent, I guess. Really, it was like, it's funny because it was a Joker. Mm. I was like, okay, so when I seen it, I'd never seen any of the Joker movies, right? So I'm thinking it's like some Batman, Robin type shit. And I went to see it on Shrooms. And I didn't know what kind of movie it was going to be. So I go and I'm like, watch them like oh this is so not what i signed up for (laughs) (laughs) so in the midst of me like tripping out and trying my best to just keep my composure while watching such a dark insane film yeah (laughs) i was like trying not to trip and i was just like kind of like feeling bad for him i was like i kind of understood from his perspective and where he was coming from and that was like kind of resonating a little bit <clears throat> and like i was like damn i feel like i'm watching a movie about myself like how just like you feel like everybody's kind of like shitting on you and mm-hmm. you just like really out here trying to live your life and make the best out of like your situation which is like a fucked up situation and then like you kind of have to turn bad guy like not that i want to go and kill everybody <laughs> but like you know you have to turn bad guy and like people you're showing you how people can push you to be a monster and i was like yeah. damn i kind of like i felt like that a lot of times like even when he was like it was just like different specific scenes like when 
he was on the couch and he was like all bony and his ribs were showing and shit. Uh-huh. I just maybe because I was I was on the streams, it reminded me of like times when I was like hella fucked up or something, and like having a and I was just like, damn, like I don't know, I was like really connecting with that movie. And it's weird because after that, I would take streams right, and I would literally be chilling, having a good time. Then it would always get a point where I started feeling like the Joker, and I'd be like, oh my god. <laughs> And those two Nobody things are just was, connected now. That's insane. Yeah, we're just one. And I was like, oh no, I had to like stop doing stream for a minute because I was like, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I saw, I saw, I saw Joker when it first came out. Um, Joaquin mm-hmm. Phoenix was great in it. Um, yeah, it reminded me. All I'm, all I'm gonna say about it is, um, it reminded me, or, or not even just it reminded me, like they, um, the person who made it. You ever, you ever see this? It's this Martin Scorsese movie called Taxi Driver. Or, or, or I'm sorry, uh, not Taxi Driver. Um, um or, no, it was it was two of them. It, um, one of them was Taxi Driver, but like, but like, I'm 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 saying that like, have you seen like everybody knows Taxi Driver? I'm at yes. um, the other. I'm sorry, the other one was um, the King of Comedy. There we go. Um, I don't think I've seen that one. It's a. Uh, it's um it's a movie with like Robert De Niro and he's like mm-hmm. trying to be like the greatest stand up comedian of all time and mm-hmm. people are just like shitting on him and he just kind of gradually loses his mind and mm-hmm. like he he wants to get on he, like, like it's kind of like in Joker where he wants to get on this late night show and mm-hmm. he reaches out he reaches out to the guy and he's like I want to come on your show and he's like fuck you you suck and all this shit and mm-hmm. he eventually makes his way on he goes on with a, it, it's like like having seen both Taxi Driver and The King of Comedy, I watched it and I was like, "This is literally just like a mashup of Taxi Driver and The King yeah, of Comedy." Yeah, let me literally write that down so I can watch it. Yeah, no, nah, I I think I think you'd like The King of Comedy a ton. It's yeah. um, but 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 yeah, like outside of um, out but but like outside of like I think like I have I haven't seen it in a couple of years, but outside of Joaquin Phoenix's performance. Like mm-hmm. he was the best part of the whole movie to me. Like if yeah, you know, like sure. if if the, if there if there wasn't like a like if somebody else if somebody else couldn't I, I don't know that anybody else could have taken that the way that he took it. He's just he's just like yeah. like it just hit you know, like his performance really just pushed the whole movie over the top for me in a way where I was like if anybody else did this I wouldn't have liked it as much. But like as a movie, I didn't love it. I didn't love Joker. I thought mm-hmm. um all I know is I'm really interested in what they're gonna do with the next one because apparently the next one's gonna be a musical and Lady Gaga's oh. playing Harley Quinn. Yeah. Okay, like, well, I love Lady Gaga, so that helps. Yeah, you know, it's it's I, I don't I I'm not a big fan of musicals. Yeah, it, it's 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 gotta be I, I, I used to be when I was younger. It's gotta be like good. It's gotta be something like yeah. it, it has to like 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 w- like when they said that Mean Girls was gonna come out as a musical, like it made sense because I know they made the musical back in 2018. But mm-hmm. like, I'm I, I don't I don't need it's it's got to be something like exceptionally crazy for me to like want right. to go see. A and musical. I don't think it's gonna be. It's not gonna be. I don't, yeah. I, I I don't think it is. <laughs> I don't think it is. I think. Uh, okay, before we move on, mm-hmm. do, who's your favorite Joker? Do you prefer? Um, Joaquin Phoenix in the new one, Heath Ledger in the Dark Knight, uh, in the Dark Knight, um, mm-hmm. or Jack Nicholson in the Tim Burton one. If you've seen the Tim Burton one, I haven't seen the Tim Burton one, but from the other two, I think definitely Joaquin Phoenix. They might have to check on him and see if he's even okay, because I know a lot of people be going crazy after doing the crazy movies like that. Yeah, yeah, I could. I used to actually want to like. I went to like like acting school for a little bit. I'm glad oh, I right? never went through with that because I probably I know myself mentally and I probably would end up like um crazy <laughs> playing like <laughs> crazy roles. No, I feel it. Yeah, no, that's what happened to Heath Ledger, who played the joke who, who played Joker yeah, in the Dark Knight. Mm-hmm. Like he I heard about le- that. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. No, that was <laughs> um when I I think I told this story once before, so I won't tell the whole thing. But long story short, I saw that movie on opening night at this uh, movie theater near my crib, and mm-hmm. we uh, <laughs> some lady brought her like infant, like m- couldn't have been two years old. My just, God, like, t- packed movie theater. It was the first time I. It, it was the first time I'd been in a movie and there was like a crying kid in it. So like, so so you remember in like the I'm in mean, the Dark Knight when like uh. 
Heath Ledger's like talking to the mob dudes and he ma- and he like puts the pencil through the dude's head. Like mm-hmm. this whole scene's happening and like he's giving the monologue and the kids just like wailing. And I'm just like, I- I'm in like high school and shit. I'm just like, why did you bring your fucking kid to this dark ass Batman movie? Like of all yeah. things, like, like get a sitter or stay home. I don't know. But that was um, kind of crazy. Yeah, it was it was pretty wild. I mean, like, I mean, like, of course, I want people to be able to have a good time, get out, you know, like, especially like if you have kids, like, oh, I, that's I kind can't of a dark movie to bring a little baby to. Yeah, I wouldn't. <laughs> I definitely yeah. wouldn't. Nah. Um, but for you, um, let's jump over to music real quick. What was um when did music become capital M music for you? Like, when did it become? something that went from like being passive like in the background to you being like music um probably like literally my first tape like well yeah because like okay my first single was just like me kind of trying things and messing around Mm -hmm. and having fun with it and then my first tape i was having fun with it too but i was still like oh okay like i I was still was pretty passionate about it and i felt like strongly about it like you know i had something but just really like as i got better at it and started understanding more about music and the art of it i was like okay like this is like all i want to do pretty much mm-hmm. like and i'm just like like i have faith in it it'll be like it'll be something one day type shit so yeah, pretty much after I got better with it, there's I don't even think there's like a specific time. Like even though I'm probably the best that I've ever been just now, I'm still just like as passionate as like I was in the past. Probably just yeah, I'm. I feel like it's the same. Yeah, you know, it, it's 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 just it's just like a skill thing. You know, like you do anything mm-hmm. long enough, you <laughs> you got to you got to get some kind of better at it exactly. if you're good at it. You know, like yeah. not 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 everybody who does shit for years is good at it but yeah but that's crazy to me <laughs> yeah right like, <laughs> i don't even understand how that can happen i don't know you know so, you, you know like some people some people's some people's talent is not being able to build a talent i don't know yeah or like limited or something yeah but um before before we move on to more like specific music stuff um was there ever a period in your life where you kind of seen music and movies as two things that complement one another like and that and that can come mm-hmm. in any way you know mm-hmm. yeah i think they definitely do like just even like soundtracks that's on the movies like if uh-huh. it wasn't for certain songs you wouldn't really feel exactly the dynamic of the movie like it's just fitting and then like i mean movies tell a story so does music so you know it's like hand in hand like if you have a song that tells enough detail it can feel like you know you're watching the movie if you close your eyes and just listen to it right you have any you have any favorite movie soundtracks on the top of your head Hmm, not that i could think of off the top of my head i don't think so but honestly like if you go back to the clock or orange i really was fucking with the beethoven Mm-hmm. Like I actually listen to Beethoven, so yeah, I really like that. But yeah, like no. other ones, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah, no, that's cool as hell though. Just yeah, yeah, because like I don't know why I didn't think to bring that up before, but like yeah, like mm-hmm. the Beethoven really is like a motif throughout the whole movie. Like he's yeah. he's everywhere in it, and yeah. uh, you know, like it's it's just like used to. I mean, like, of course, there's like more than just Beethoven, but like his music is like, you know, like that song specifically is like so mm-hmm. integral to like understanding like how bro is feeling at the time. Um, mm-hmm. I and... also just seen like a funny fact um, last night. I forget which song exactly it was, but I think it was maybe the first song that he put out that he actually did have lyrics to it. But I guess the lyrics were so bad that he wasn't like that well with his words. So they just took the lyrics out and just was like, we're just gonna put it out like this. <laughs> ah, that's funny as hell. I never heard mm-hmm. that before. Some people, some people, some people just some people just aren't born to write words, you know. Sometimes yeah. some some people just express themselves better through music, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. Um also 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 is Beethoven black? Because I've been hearing stories recently that maybe. Beethoven might have been black. Or, yeah, or, or I need to look into that because he could have been. I seen something about like Abraham Lincoln being black. Oh, see that I haven't heard. 
Yeah, and that's why he was on the penny. And he was like turned away. His head was turned the other side from everybody else. Never heard Even of that in, like, before. Even like old pictures, he like his nose is kind of wide. It was like he his pose like half black. And I was like, damn, that makes a lot of sense. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. No. It's it's kind of like how they've been saying um uh Babe Ruth was Dominican. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've seen something about that. <laughs> <laughs> I've been I've been I've been I've been seeing more proof come up. Yeah. Just. We 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 need answers. That's all I know. We yeah. need answers. That'd yeah. be fun. Um. So, so you know, like you were talking earlier about how like your first singles and things were where you started to really first like dig into music, for real. Mm-hmm. And like, of course, you know, like you've been. I mean, like you had been producing at one point too. And yeah, um, so funny. When, you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, nah. Real quick, real quick before I ask you this next question, I mean, like, I know we've already talked about it, but like, but like, fill people in on when you first started producing. Cause like, okay, that's, so, that's, yeah. <laughs> that was like, that was like probably before, I don't know if that was before or after my first single, probably maybe after. I was probably like 2018, honestly, 2018, 2019. When I was first, first, like, really dabbling into music. The first couple of years, I was dabbling into music, at least. And my dad just gave me an iPad. And I was just so intrigued with music, period. And I was just like, nobody really was sending me beats because nobody knew what I could do. Because I was a very right. new artist. Except for, like, who's, like, now my baby's dad. At the time, he wasn't. Um, We were just, like, dating. And he would just give me beats. But he would be giving me, like, a lot of email beats. That's, like, what he was really working on then. So I was like, okay, I don't always feel like that. So I was like, okay, like, where am I going to get these beats from? So I just had GarageBand, and I would just be, like, playing around with, like, a little keyboard on there and the drums and shit. And I would just make, like, simple, simple, like, R&B kind of, like, Erica Badu, Boom Pap kind of beats. Uh-huh. And, yeah, I honestly, there's some that wasn't even bad. It was just, like, very simple. There's this one that I don't even know what happened to it that I hope I can just like remake it. There's one that was really good, but it's not on my iPad anymore. So I have to find that again. That was a pretty good one. What it sound like? It was like, like it was really simple. Mm-hmm. And I was singing on it too. And it was, it was really good, actually. I should have dropped it. <laughs> well, no, nah, I hope you remake it at some point. You know, like yeah. it, 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 it'd be it'd be it'd be fun to revisit all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, so so I mean, like one thing. So, so so I mean, like one thing that I've always, one thing that I've always loved about your music is that like it really, like th- like like the way you rap, like you constantly straddle the line between shit that's like real and funny. Like you're not, <laughs> so, you, you know, you you know, like you're not somebody that I would consider like a. Like you have punchlines, but you're not like a capital F, capital R, like funny rapper in that way. Like in the sense of like, I don't think you're like aiming to be funny. But yeah, like, never. But like your shit just makes me laugh. Like you know, just mm-hmm. just just like the way you put words together, and just like you're so, like it's so direct. Like it's just the type of shit that's just like it's real, but like yeah. it's so direct, and you just like get right to what you're trying to say in a way that like makes me laugh. And like I know I'm probably not the only person who feels no. that way <laughs> it's so funny because i was in the studio with kim like the other night yeah. and i was recording like the last song of the night and then i said something i was even hesitant to say because i was just not even because of what it was but just because it was like a shift change in the song and it was just like kind of slower from the tempo i was going on and i was just like well, i'm just trying i'm just say it and just and see how it goes so i said it and then i just hear everybody cracking up behind me in the back <laughs> and i was like oh my god i was like what y'all laughing at and they just like oh my god that's so hard and i was like okay mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah that happens you, a lot i was gonna say do you, do you remember do you remember what you said that made people that made people fall out yeah i said asian bitch love me long time she from beijing and they were just cracking up and then like i added like an ad lib and they just lost it after that they were just like oh my god her <laughs> mind <laughs> <laughs> I guess it was just so like left from what they was expecting from the other part of the song was nothing like that so it was right like... <laughs> yo my fault sorry to interrupt but I just wanted to shout out the all new Real Notes Patreon page real quick if you're looking for ways to connect and directly support the podcast the Real Notes Patreon is the best way to do so 
For as little as $5 a month, you can gain early day before access to every forthcoming episode of Real Notes, as well as an invite to the Real Notes Discord server, where you can talk to others about the latest and greatest in movies and music, come through for some listening sessions, and talk about whatever else is on your mind. I know I'm going to be talking a bunch. <laughs> if you feel like coming up off a little bit more, you could get cool exclusive content, like audio from Real Notes Live and Real Talk interviews. Those will be exclusive to patrons and ticket holders moving forward access to retro versions of my 60 second minute made movie reviews and even a monthly writing and podcasting workshop hosted by me regular episodes will still be available on a weekly basis anywhere you get your podcast but if you want the extras you got to come out them pockets a bit check us out at patreon.com slash real notes that's r-e-e-l-n-o-t-e-s i appreciate your consideration and support more than you know now let's get back to talking See, yeah, yeah no, nah, yeah, no. Nah, I think I think that's what does it, cause like, cause, cause like it really is, like it really is so unexpected, you know. Like there's mm-hmm. like, you know, like there's so many people out of like Cali and like Michigan in particular who were just like, you know, like you hear their shit and it's funny, but it's not like they're telling jokes. Like y'all yeah. just like say shit that people don't expect. And that's that how I just, felt like, when I heard Rio for the first time. Like I showed my dad, he was just cracking him. He was like, "Yo, who is this? Like this guy's crazy." <laughs> Rio's amazing, man. Like yeah, he has a, such a way with words. <laughs> yeah, nah, he he's he's yeah, nah, he's really something else. I saw I saw I saw you mentioned in some piece recently that um you said think last from the art of geeking was inspired by mm-hmm. Rio the Young OG. Yeah, there's is... this one beat by him on his um tape with um Mike. There's just one I can't think of the name specifically, but you'll notice the beat. It's it's like the one on there that's the beat is like so crazy. I heard it and I was like whoa i was like what the hell and i was instantly texting my producer I was like hey i need a, something a beat crazy like this like where's the people <laughs> making crazy beats like crazy beats like that make you say crazy things it just comes out right. and it's like spills out of you right yeah nah and, it, and and it's just like i can tell you know like i can tell like the way you rap that just like you're always you're always taken like by whatever beat you're on because like i was um mm-hmm. when um mm-hmm. when it came when it when, when it came out i was listening to rx like crazy off of uh the rapture which mm-hmm. i gotta w- which i gotta plug for a second my man knows the time ian co-produced that shout out yeah. to him he's he's amazing um i'm i'm a, mm-hmm. i'm a big fan of his so like see so like seeing him with a credit on one of your albums i was like oh i'm obviously listening to that first <laughs> but like that's fire yeah he's cool um i met Watton and never met him but um i got that be from Braden. I guess he was like they knew each other from like way back home. Like I guess um he or Braden helped him or he helped Braden like learn how to make beats or something. I was like, yeah, that's crazy. It's really full circle. Though. Like I ended up getting on that. Yeah, yeah that beat's nah. crazy. It's one of my favorites. I heard that and I was like, whoa. <laughs> and yeah, no, nah, y'all just put the video out for it too. And it's just like mm-hmm. y'all just like rapping in like I think like the studio and in like a stairwell and just yeah and just you know just j- j- yeah just like regular shit you know it was a really random video it wasn't really planned <laughs> it just kind of happened yeah yeah because yeah because the um um the have you seen her video also kind of <laughs> feels like it like I, I mean like, I don't know if it was but like it has mm-hmm. that same feeling where it's just like you're just like chilling in like a park on like a playground and shit like yeah. on like those like really specific like those like i don't know how else to describe it but like it's it, like ribbed benches if it, it feels weird yeah, to say like, but kind like of like <laughs> <laughs> like, I, like those little i guess like a like like a barbecue area picnic cloth tables but you know they have a cloth on or whatever right but i guess that's what they do that i don't remember exactly what i was planning for that video but i was probably just like yeah let's just shoot something like i don't even care what it is let's just shoot it right that's usually how i am because i'm just like some things just don't have to have that crazy of a visual but just like you know yeah no because i was gonna ask because I, I was gonna say i feel like a lot of your videos are just kind of like you just like chilling with people and just like rapping mm-hmm. your shit and like you know like not like you said not every video needs to be this like overly thought out conceptual thing it can just yeah. be like 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 to like to me that almost grounds it more in reality than like exactly. something that than, than, than something else would you know like that's you know like i'm i'm seeing more stuff like that in my real life so i can't mm-hmm. not to say like i relate I mean, like i relate to it sure but like i don't know it, it just works you know like obviously i love yeah. it when people like go crazy with an idea but sometimes a song can just be 
it just like, depends hey, on the song i feel like yeah like the song was like that like honestly the songs that have to go crazy if if like i probably just won't do a visual to it if i can't do something with a crazy budget because it just wouldn't make sense and i'll just right. leave it up to the imagination because suddenly you don't really need a video it kind of you can picture a video when you listen to it you know mm-hmm but yeah, have you seen her kind of just end up going like with like everything that I was kind of saying, just like me, like at a park, kind of like I'm looking for a bitch, I guess. It's kind of probably what I right. picture. I don't really remember at this moment, like if that's yeah. happened on accident or on purpose, probably both. Right. But yeah, you know, like I think, I think, I think it worked for exactly what it needed to be. Yeah. You know, and like, yeah, it, it's it's just like fun to watch. Like I remember sending it to people and just being like, "This is cool." You, 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 you know, like people would just be like, "This shit just like looks cool. It feels cool." And like mm-hmm. I think somebody told me specifically, like it just, like it fits exactly what I would expect this to look like if somebody were <laughs> yeah. to make a video. So yeah, I, I feel like it. That. Yeah, me too. Um, okay. I got, I got, I got, I got two more questions for you, okay. and one. One one specifically being about um, the art of geeking, just in the sense that, like, of course, like for anybody listening who doesn't know, like you went through a pretty scary medical episode right before that album came out. Um, you mm-hmm. had an allergic reaction to some medication that brought about um, Steven Johnson syndrome, which mm-hmm. gave you a whole. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to I'm not like you've told the story a dozen times. Um, I'm not going to make you do that again. But, um, you know, like the thing about like like the thing about the art of geeking that's so special to me outside of the fact that it's just like dope as shit is like two things one the fact that uh like the cover you chose to do with like mm-hmm. you in the hospital <laughs> bed throwing up hands on some young thug shit like mm-hmm. that shit was just like j- j- just like really like laughing in the face of death type shit yeah like, literally. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm always Not a really big fan shit. <laughs> right exactly <laughs> and um you know, just like I was wondering because um, I don't know exactly when all of that stuff was recorded. Like, mm-hmm. first off, was that recorded before or after you got out of the hospital? Um, Before, I'm trying to, I don't think it was any after. I think it was probably all before. Oh, shit. Sure. Okay. Yeah. It was funny because it was all before, but when I listened back to certain songs, certain things that I was saying, kind of ties into what was about to happen in my life which is insane i don't even know like how the fuck that like hell was but like i think it was like specifically bring me down like i was just it was like kind of was one of the slower songs in there and i was like at the end i said like i got tunnel vision now only god can bring me down and then literally mm. like the craziest fucking thing ever happened in my life like happened it was just like that's kind of it was kind of crazy when i like heard back heard it back and i was like damn it had like it kind of was already written i feel like you know right wow see okay so i was so i was coming i was coming at this thinking that you recorded most of this after you got out the hospital Mm -hmm. but the fact that you recorded a lot of it before and like it and like it's weird because like having because like having that cover like having having that picture of you like mm-hmm. right before everything went south like represent this stuff that you made before you even like were sick in any way mm-hmm. like have you, you know, like looking back on that like i i, I well, I'm like i guess you already kind of said it but like how else does it feel looking back on something that like had nothing to do with that but you know like kind of looking back on that after having gone through everything you did mm-hmm. like j- yeah so like when I first did it, I don't know what I was like. I guess I was just like, that would be hard cover. But then I feel like there was a moment where I was like, hmm, does that even make sense? Because it was like, the songs are pretty upbeat. And it's like, kind of like a different vibe from what exactly the picture is. Like you would think that I'm telling like a story about my life and shit, which I don't right. feel like I wasn't really especially like not the more upbeat songs but then when i think back about it it's like and i listen to the actual lyrics and certain shit and just like even the titles like i mean i was geeking and like that's what led up to you know me being in the hospital and things like i was like literally in a bad space in my life just feeling like mentally like crazy and like was like literally geeking too like and had to get on some 
medicine so I could feel like I wasn't losing my mind. So it kind of like all just ended up tying in. That kind of happens with me like literally a lot. Even like with um, my catalog, even just like the pictures, like it, they kind of go cohesive with like previous ones. Like everything just kind of always aligns up on accident. So right. yeah, I feel like there was a time where I was like, oh, this doesn't make sense. But then like me, I feel like it, nobody would really know if I didn't like tell the story, you know, and how it actually makes sense. Like it's something you have to like actually think about and like really listen to key parts of the songs and then be like, oh, okay, I get it. It's definitely right. probably not something you would just see and be like, oh yeah, that makes sense. It's like everything has more depth to it when it comes with me in my art. Right. Yeah, you, you know, and mm -hmm. like and, and, and like I appreciate you saying that because like be, be, because like even so, like one of the things I've always really appreciated about your art is like how direct it is and just mm -hmm. like and just like how like not even on some like you're rapping the first thing that comes to your mind, but it's just like mm -hmm. you don't mince words like you let people know exactly how you feel and the shit sounds mm -hmm. dope, you know, um, what it. um, of course, what um, like being you know, like coming out of the hospital after everything that happened, like, do you mm -hmm. feel like that affected the way you create at all? Like, did you yeah. kind of approach? Yeah. How? How so? Honestly, like, okay, so when I was in the hospital, there was a point where I kind of guess I, I wasn't thinking about music, like, forgetting even, like, who I really was and what I was doing before. And then, like, there was a time when I was, like, just, like, I just got, like, a overwhelming amount of strength. And I would just listen back to my old songs, and I'd be like, damn, like, I was kind of good. Like, I just kind of forgot, like, what I could do. And I was like, damn, okay, I'm kind of good. And then, like, when I got out, I was like... I would just listen to more of my songs and I'll be like, damn, I can't wait to like go back to the studio. I just couldn't at that moment because my voice was still from the breathing tube. My voice was like, I couldn't, really, I didn't have a voice yet. Right. So, and then um, when I was eventually able to go back to the studio, I feel like I definitely got way better. I don't know exactly why or if it was just like me just being hung that like same hunger like let me get back to the time that i the two months that i like missed out on shit because it was just like a lot <laughs> musically that was like supposed to happen in that time i just got stuck at a standstill and so i don't know it definitely like made me go harder and have like more of a story to tell too like yeah Right. I'm sure, you know, because I mean, like, that's your instrument, like as a, you know, like mm -hmm. as a rapper, like your voice is your instrument. I had I had somebody on here uh, within, the, I think, like maybe about two years ago at this point. He's a rapper from Brooklyn named Sky Zoo. He had mm -hmm. polyps on his vocal cords and he had to go get surgery to get the polyps taken off or else he was going to lose his voice. What like he was like, they're, they're, they're like these like big ass, like, like skin clumps that just mm -hmm. like show up or, or, or like it's more complicated than that but they're these like big like masses that like pop up mm -hmm. on certain parts of your body and they can like fuck mm -hmm. your body up if you leave them they're kind of like uh they're almost like tumors they actually mm -hmm. might have been tumors i can't remember but long mm -hmm. story short he um he got out of the hospital and he tried rapping again he like he was like i hate the way my voice sounds i can't yeah. find like my groove and shit that was like eventually too, honestly yeah yeah no like how long how long did it take you how long did it take you to find your voice again like not even in terms of like physically mm -hmm. using it but like feeling comfortable mm -hmm. like hearing it and shit well okay for singing purposes i still don't even well i'm not even out of the thing my voice is just not the same period like it's, i don't think it will ever be the same i know it takes a really long time for it to go back but singing wise I can't sing like at all, like how I used to be. Not even like I was a great, amazing singer, but just certain notes, my voice just can't have that. It just doesn't have that same kind of range. I can like finesse it now, but like it's still not the same at all. But for rapping, even like sometimes like I still have trouble, like even just finding like I don't think I sound the same in my raps, and probably just me being comfortable with like a new sound going from like. When I feel like I found my sound, this is my tone, then to having to like adjust to a new one and making it work and just be me, me being just like confused because I do have like multiple flows too. So then I'm kind of like, oh, like which one works best or which one do I want to sound like, you know? It's still mm -hmm. like confusing sometimes. I still get lost in me like, oh, forget like what's my most recent sound or tone. But mostly the singing was like really like, was just like, oh, I hated that. 
Oh man. Yeah, yeah. like I can't yeah, like like I can't even imagine just like having to like re just like get used to your voice again on some shit mm -hmm. like that. And considering all that stuff and all the different ways you've uh you feel like you've like grown and matured and taken on a mm -hmm. new perspective, like talk to me about bringing that to the rapture and like what recording the rapture was like and how uh you know, like how you would say you've changed in between like the art of geeking and the new project considering that it's been there's there's you lived a lot of life in the last yeah, year and a half. <laughs> <for sure. laughs> I would say <clears throat> well in um the art of geeking I was definitely high on a lot of those songs. So the rapture I was not on Adderall and like uppers for like long studio sessions and stuff like that so i think you can definitely hear that that's why they're not so upbeat and like angst like anxious sounding but um mostly for the rapture i was kind of just having fun just being with like um a close friend of mine who had a lot to do with like the album and like the titles and everything too it was like her idea how everything was like spelled out with my name and just being mm -hmm. like um <clears throat> With her even like the first song um we did it she has like a verse in there too but i just i wanted to be on there because she starts off from it um i wanted to be like that but it ended up just being like okay i guess better for it just to be like me on it but i do eventually want the other one to come out but um yeah i was just being in the studio me just meeting new producers and just you know luckily like flowing good off of each other and creating good art and just me playing with new sounds i feel like it was actually it was actually like pretty easy doing it like it wasn't like i had to like like it wasn't like a struggle with me finding like a new sound it was just it just came easy and like natural um <clears throat> I like kind of experimented with new sounds accidentally, but it was easy while doing it in the process. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it was just, I feel like this is probably my best tape ever. I feel like <clears throat> Big Africa was like hard to top. <clears throat> and like before this one, I feel like it was not topping it, but I think this one is one where I can definitely say that it did top it just like I feel like all overall, there's like no skips as to Big Africa kind of had like some where it's kind of like, mm, I, I like I don't even listen to like the last couple ones on that album. But this one I feel like mm -hmm. cohesively like comes together and just tells a story and like kind of how I'm just like back to wrap this shit up literally in the music world. <laughs> That's hard. What was um it's what would you say what would you say was the most surprising like like you know you talked about like experimenting a bit like what would you say was the most surprising part of like what song would you say was the most surprising for you to make like what was the thing where you were like oh this is kind of cool that this turned out this way like just like something you weren't expecting <clears throat> um follow the leader was really like one that i did that song so fast and i don't even like i wasn't even planning or expecting to do it like that Mm -hmm. and like i don't even think i've got on a beat like that ever so it was just kind of like one thing where i heard it and i was like oh yeah instantly instantly like loaded up and i just instantly it was just like had something to say and it was just like so fast and i like that song a lot it's kind of like melodic i can already like picture a video for it it was mm -hmm. just like yeah i'm trying to think what else oh also i really like the last one um always on go tybn that one um my friend levi did that who does like a lot of my um old like beats and stuff um mm -hmm. that one i don't think i've done a song like that either i was like i don't know kind of tapping into something else with that one that one i kind of just instantly like i don't even he didn't even finish that beat and i was just like no like, i need to get on it and he was like well yeah i'm, gonna I'm trying to tweak it. And i was like no like i need to get on it now <laughs> like I just was like, nah, this one, yeah, that one's hard. That's one of my favorites on the tape for sure. Nah, that's cool as hell. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm, you know, like, I'm happy to hear that there's stuff on here that you, you know, kind of felt pushed you creatively because, like, mm -hmm. I can tell, like, like to me, listening to the rapture, I do hear, like, a, I don't want to say like a renewed sense of purpose, but it does kind mm -hmm. of feel like you, 
you know, like this is this is you kind of taking a crack at this after having gone through something really traumatic and being like, mm -hmm. wow, like I'm here, you know, it, it really feels like I'm here. So let me make the most of it. And let me just like right. really shit on y'all one time real quick. Like, <laughs> yeah, like exactly. I feel like it's definitely kind of more of like me coming into my my sound. Like even though I've done that, I feel like this is more of like my true adult sound, like like actual big Africa sound, you know? Mm hmm Yeah, no, nah, yeah, yeah, no. Nah. So you would feel like this is you really <laughs> like this is this is kind of like this is me. Yeah, and me like actually know what I'm doing for real, for real. Like I thought I know what I was doing before, but like this is me like sober mind, like really knowing what I'm doing, like proving it. I felt damn, I love that, you know. And, and yeah, now that means we got even more to look forward to in the future, you know. Yeah, it's like, for it's sure. like laser, laser focus and all that. And um to formally wrap this up, um, baby Africa, Jasmine, if your life was a movie, what would it be about? Hmm, that's a good one. Probably, probably like some fucking Jumanji shit, making it out of like a crazy <laughs> fucking a crazy situation mixed with like like a whole lot of fighting, but like it will be physically fighting, but it will be like a metaphor, not me physically fighting, but like fighting other things in life and like other worldly things in my own brain, like myself. Some Scott Pilgrim shit mixed together. <laughs> Jumanji, Jumanji mixed with Scott Pilgrim is a crazy, a crazy thing to even <laughs> think about. You know, like <laughs> yeah, two crazy worlds colliding. Yeah, nah, and 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 you know, like you just kind of, you just kind of coming through the, coming through the dust clouds, looking all like <laughs> cartoon cell shaded and shit. Beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Damn, that's so good. But um, yo, thank you so much again. Like this was like like for this to be my first one back, it's like this was this was a really nice like palate cleanser to jump back in. And Aww. you already know you, you you already know what it is. Like I've been a fan for I've been a fan <laughs> for a minute. And just to like see you, you know, still here, still healthy and feeling like you're kind of at the peak of your creative powers, like mm -hmm. yeah. I'm I'm just I'm just happy for you. And I really thank you feel, like, so I know, much. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, no. Nah. And I know and I know you're not really I know you're not really um I know you don't do very many interviews, so it meant a lot that you wanted yeah, to come to this. Yeah, people don't ask the right questions. <laughs> people need help. I should like write them. Yeah, I I I mean I mean I get it, you know. I I uh I tr you know, I try my best, but it's uh I do notice that a lot of people don't be asking the right questions. Yeah, and, I think uh, mainly cuz you know, they don't even like do that much research on artists before they want to conduct the interview and yeah. Nick, it's very sh like you can tell yeah you know it, it's just <laughs> like it's a respect thing you know like if you're exactly. gonna talk to somebody like you should know you don't have to you, you know you, you don't got to be narwhar but like you got to know mm -hmm. something you know like, exactly <laughs> but um it meant a lot but you know it means a lot to uh it means a lot that you wanted to come back and do one of these with me and yes. um just thank you just thank you for the music yeah, and thank you for, for having me for real yeah nah anytime for asking good questions <laughs> i appreciate nah nah that means the world you know all all, all, all i ever want to do is ask good questions and help people mm -hmm. tell their story and shit so exactly. that's all i'm here and, for and you're doing just that thank you for real thanks for listening shout out to y'all for making it this far Shout out to all the black people listening too, because y'all really impeccable. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and tell a friend to come through next time. One.